Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to check out the inner workings of the task system in Battle Royale Tycoon. Now that we know how to make and queue complex tasks, let's put them to the test with something really interesting. Let's begin. Alright, so here's our scene so far. We have a worker in here. We can spawn different task types that have different executions. So I can tell him to move here. I can tell him to play a victory animation. And in the previous video, we added support for validating and queuing a task and made the worker clean up some shells after some time. So I can click to spawn a shell sprite and a shell cleanup task, which will make the worker go to the sprite position, play an animation and clean up the sprite. The task is queued, so he only does that when the task is valid, which happens after five seconds. So let's see that. I click the spawn, five second delay. He waits, one, two, three, four, five. Task is dequeued, he goes there, he executes and cleans it up. Okay, great. All right, so now let's use our knowledge of complex tasks and queuing tasks to create a real world scenario that you might use in your game. Let's say I have a weapon that I want to take to a storage position but I only want to take the weapon there if the storage position is empty. So we're going to create a task to take that weapon, but the task will only be executed once a free storage position is found. The game is still in development, so if you like the concept, go to the Steam page, add it to your wishlist and follow. So to make testing easy, let's begin by making some function to spawn a weapon and a weapon slot. So let's go all the way down here and essentially copy the spawn floor shell since that's what we want to do. We want to create a sprite. So let's call this spawn pistol sprite. And have another one for spawn weapon slot. Alright, so here I have the two functions to spawn a pistol sprite. He uses the pistol sprite, it puts it in the correct position. Same thing for the weapon slot, it creates simply a white pixel, so a square tinted in gray and placed in the correct position. Alright, so let's spawn a pistol on the left mouse click. So up here, left mouse click, instead of adding this task, let's spawn a pistol sprite on the mouse position. And on the right mouse click, let's spawn a weapon slot. All right, so let's test and see if we can spawn the sprites. All right, so on left mouse click, I can spawn pistols. And on right mouse click, I can spawn weapon slots. Okay, great. So now let's make a complex task for grabbing a weapon, taking it to a weapon slot and dropping it. So let's go into the task system. And up here, let's make a new task type public class, let's call it take weapon to weapon slot. So in here, the worker moves to weapon position, grabs the weapon, takes it to weapon slot, and drops the weapon. That's the behavior we want to create. So in here, let's figure out what information the worker needs to execute this task. So first of all, obviously he needs a vector three for the weapon position. Then he needs to grab the weapon. Now the way we're going to add that is as an action. So we'll focus on the implementation when we actually create the task. So we'll make a public action grab weapon. Once he grabs the weapon, he needs to take it to the weapon slot. So let's make a public vector three for the weapon slot position. And finally, we need another action for dropping our weapon. So a public action drop weapon. All right, so this task now has all the information that the worker will need to execute it. Now let's set up the worker. So in here on switch on type, let's do a switch on the take weapon to weapon slot. And we're going to make a function with that name that takes a weapon slot. So let's make that. Go down here, make a private void and it takes a task system dot task dot take weapon to weapon slot and let's call it dot task okay great so in here let's make him execute the task first of all we go to that position so worker dot move to and we're going to move to take weapon to slot task first of all move to the weapon position when we get there let's grab the weapon so take weapon do the grab weapon action once we grab it, then we're going to do a worker.move2 and we're going to move to the weapon slot position. 
And when we get there, execute this action and this action will do the take weapon dot drop weapon. And once we do, we go back to idle. All right, so the worker is now set up. When he receives a take weapon to weapon slot task, he moves to the weapon position. Once he gets there, he grabs the weapon. He moves to the weapon slot position. He drops the weapon and goes back to idle. So let's go in the game handler. And up here, let's easily spawn the task. So let's first spawn these two so we can easily see them. So a game object for the pistol game object. And another one for the weapon slot game object. Instead of spawning on the mouse position, let's spawn to the left and to the right of our worker. So put it on 400, 500. And this one, put it on the right of the worker. So on 600, 500. Okay, great. So now in here, let's spawn the actual task. So we're going to create a task system dot task task, and it will be a new CM task system dot task dot take weapon to weapon slot. And then we're going to add it to the task system dot add task of this task. All right, now the information we need in here, first of all, for the weapon position, let's give it the pistol game object dot transform dot position. For the weapon slot position, let's give it the weapon slot game object transform dot position. For the grab weapon, this is where we're going to do something interesting. Now, when we grab the weapon, it is actually quite useful if we can know who grabbed it. So let's go into task system and modify in here for the grab weapon. Instead of being a simple action, let's be an action that takes an argument, which is a worker task AI. So this way we can know who has grabbed the weapon. So in here, when we're creating the grab weapon, we'll take the worker task AI as an argument. So worker task AI. And now we know who has grabbed this weapon. So who is executing this particular task. So now the simplest thing to do in here is to simply parent the weapon to the worker. That way the weapon will follow the worker as he moves. So we can do a pistol game object dot transform dot set parent. And we're simply going to set the parent to the worker dot transform. All right. So when he grabs, he simply parents the weapon to the worker. And for the drop weapon, we're going to execute a action and this action does not have any parameters. And what we're going to do here is simply reset the parent back to null. And down here, just to make sure that he did drop the weapon, let's move him away. So let's spawn a simple move to position task just to move him away. So put this in here and here. All right, so first we are spawning the sprite for the pistol and a sprite for the weapon slot. Then we are creating a task. We are using the weapon position as that pistol sprite position, the weapon slot position as the weapon slot game object transform dot position. For the grab weapon action, we are simply setting the pistol game object parent to the worker transform. And for the drop, we are simply resetting the parent back to no. So this way, the weapon should follow the worker when the worker is carrying it. And finally, we simply added a move to position just to move the worker away. So we make sure that he is correctly dropping the weapon. All right, so let's test and see if the worker is correctly executing that task. All right, there he is going to the weapon. When he gets there, yep, he grabs the weapon. You can see the weapon is now following him. Now he's going to the weapon slot when he gets there. Yep, he correctly dropped the weapon and he executed the other task and moved away. All right, great. This is exactly the behavior we want to create. So now that this complex task is working, let's validate the task before executing it. So the thing we want to check is if the weapon slot is actually available before we execute that task. In order to do that, let's make a simple weapon slot class. So let's go all the way down here make a private class weapon slot and this will simply be a very simple object just to keep track of when the weapon slot is empty and when it is occupied so let's have a public transform for the weapon slot transform we're going to have a function public bowl is empty and in here we're simply going to return if the weapon slot transform equals null that's how we're going to identify if it is empty 
Before we do that, let's make a weapon slot constructor. And on the constructor, we're simply going to receive the transform for the weapon slot. And let's have a public void function to set the weapon transform. And a public vector three, just to get the position of this weapon slot. So we're going to return the weapon slot transform dot position. Let's make a function to change the color so we can visually see when it is empty and when it is occupied. So a private void update sprite. All right, so here it is a very simple weapon slot class. We have an inner transform, so this should actually be private. We create it using that transform. We have a function to check if this weapon slot is empty. We can set the weapon transform. We can update the sprite to visually show the color, whether it's empty or not. If it is empty, then it shows in gray. If not, it shows in red, and we can grab the position. All right, now let's make this slot become empty after some time. So when we set the weapon transform, let's use the function timer, which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, which is always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. And we're going to create, now the function timer executes an action after some time. So after, let's say, four seconds, we're going to essentially destroy this weapon. And now in here, I actually made a mistake with the weapon transform. We need a second transform for the weapon transform. So we need the reference to the weapon slot transform as well as the weapon transform that he's currently carrying. So the weapon slot transform, you do have this one, but for the weapon transform, in this case, it starts off null, so it is empty. So that's what we're going to test. And when we set it in here, we're going to set the weapon transform instead of the weapon slot transform. Okay, so we have a weapon slot transform, which is a transform of this weapon slot and a weapon transform which is the weapon that is occupying this slot. And that's what we use to test if it is empty and when we set it, the same thing. And now after four seconds of setting the weapon transform, we're going to destroy the weapon transform.game object and we're going to again set the weapon transform back to null. So essentially every time we set something in here, we're going to destroy it after four seconds and reset it back to null. This is just so we can easily see it being occupied and empty and occupied again. All right, so let's test that behavior. Up here, when we create the weapon slot, let's create an actual weapon slot object. Weapon slot equals new weapon slot, and it's going to take the sprite game object dot transform. So now in here, let's do a function timer just for testing to create a function that will execute, let's say after two seconds. So after two seconds, the weapon slot dot set the weapon transform to this one that we spawned up here. And for now, let's comment out the tasks. So we just want to test the actual weapon slot code. All right, so let's see. All right, there's a slot, it's empty. Now it is occupied with this one and now that one, poof, it vanishes and it's empty again. Okay, great. So we now have what is necessary to test if our task validation is working correctly. So up here, let's only add one more thing down to our weapon slot. And we're going to need a private bool for has weapon incoming. Essentially, we need to know if this one is currently empty, but has something incoming onto it. So let's make a public void set has weapon incoming. And when we test for empty, we make sure that that one is null and has no weapon incoming. So we're adding this just to make sure that we keep the slot busy while the worker is en route to taking a weapon to this weapon slot. And when we set the transform, let's reset back to false since the weapon has been received. All right, so let's go up here and first let's store a reference to the weapon slot. Weapon slot, weapon slot. Okay. And this is what we're going to set. And we're no longer going to spawn a weapon on the start in here. Or rather, we are going to go in here when we spawn a weapon. Let's store the game object, pistol game object. 
So now when we do spawn a weapon, we need to also spawn a queued task. So we're going to go into the task system dot a task. Now the task that we are going to queue will essentially test if the weapon slot is available. So if the weapon slot dot is empty, if it is empty, then we do want to take him there. If not, then we want to keep the task on the queue. So return null. So if it is empty, the first thing we do is tell the weapon slot that it has a weapon incoming. So set has weapon incoming to true. And then we want to execute this task in here. So task same as previously and it's what we're going to return. And the weapon slot will be this weapon slot in here dot transform dot position, except we have the get position. All right. So when we press the left mouse button, we spawn a pistol sprite and we add a test to the queue that will test if that weapon slot is empty. If it is not empty, then it returns null and it keeps trying again. When it is empty, we set it to has a weapon and we generate the task that we saw previously, which sets the weapon position, the slot, grab, drop, and so on, and returns that task. All right, so let's test and make sure that we are queuing the tasks whenever we spawn a pistol. And since the weapon slot is automatically destroying the weapon after some time, it should constantly be becoming occupied, empty, occupied, empty, and so on. So let's see. One final thing is in here, when we drop the weapon, we need to actually add the weapon to the weapon slot. So we go to the weapon slot dot set the weapon transform to this pistol game object dot transform. So we notify the weapon slot when the weapon actually arrives at the slot. So let's test. All right, here's the weapon slot. As you can see, it is in gray, which means that it is empty. Now, when I click, it's going to spawn a pistol sprite and the worker will grab the task, move towards the pistol and move towards the weapon slot. And as soon as I click, the weapon slot will turn red since it has a weapon incoming. So let's see if all that is working. So I click. Yep, it is red. Task dequeued. He's going. He gets there. He drops it. And now after five seconds, he should destroy the weapon. And yep, there you go. It's in gray. So now let's try to spawn multiple weapons at once. So there's one and there's another one. That one is taking it. He goes in there. All right. So now the weapon is occupying that slot. And after five seconds, it gets destroyed. It gets empty. He grabs the other one and so on and so forth. So as you can see, we can now queue up various actions and they will only be executed once the question, once the validation function has been validated. So there you have it. We created a task that is a complex task and use task queuing to only execute when it can actually be executed. This exact behavior is used many times in Battle Royale Tycoon. In the next video, we're going to cover how to set up multiple task systems with multiple task types. Again, the game is still in development, so if you like the concept, go to the scene page, add it to your wishlist and follow. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from intcodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.